And so today I'm going to cover, actually there's one verse in Hebrews 11 that doesn't even mention the person that I'm covering today. So um, it simply says in, in uh, chapter 11, verse 30, by faith the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. I'm gonna take two weeks to cover that. But today, we're gonna to talk about Joshua. What a mighty man of God. And when you talk about someone who walks by faith, and that's the title of the message here, walking with God by faith. How many of you walk with God? How many wish you, no, not too many, okay. <laughs> how many here walk with God? How many wanna know how to walk better? I tell you what, that is always cool because we are human. How many are human? Okay, you don't even have to raise your hand on that one, you know? How many have a brain that seems to wanna to go in the other direction when God wants to take you here, okay? So we face a lot of difficulties in our lives, but I am telling you that God is the answer to every single thing we face, amen? That's the God we serve. That's who's here today. So we're talking about walking with God by faith and we're gonna talk about Joshua. Let me give you a little bit of history on who Joshua is. He was born the son of Nun in the tribe of Ephraim. And according to Numbers 11:28, he had been Moses' aid since youth. I find that fascinating when I read that because how important is children's ministry? How important is youth ministry? Because you have to start early. If you have kids today, it doesn't matter how old they are, you put the word of God in them because God could be using them for great purposes. It's one of the things that Joshua was known for. He was born in bondage in Egypt. That's all he knew. He experienced God's glory in the plagues. He went through the Passover experience and the escape from Egypt. And he experienced the people's struggles. I mean, he's watching the people struggle with coming out of Egypt. They kept wanting to go back. As soon as hardship happened, they kept wanting to go back. And he saw that. He witnessed the Red Sea miracle. And then when the Amalekites attacked the Israelites in the wilderness, Moses chose him as commander of the army. And they won a major victory against the Amalekites. He was with Moses on Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments. He was sent as one of the 12 spies at the footstep of the Promised Land. You remember when they came to the Promised Land, 12 spies were picked and he was one of them. And it's interesting to note that his original name was not Joshua. It was Hosea. Hosea means help or salvation. And Moses changed his name before they went into the promised land to Joshua. Hosea to Joshua. And Joshua means Yahweh helps. Yeah. Yahweh saves. That is a fascinating thing because one commentary said, the name change indicates Moses' reliance on the Lord and his awareness of the spies need to do so as they carry out their specific assignments. <laughs> It's almost as if Moses knew that Joshua was going to be used mightily of God. And so when the 12 spies came back, only two of them gave a good report. And he was one of those two. He saw the glass half full when the other spies saw it half empty. I don't know if you do that. Sometimes you look at your circumstances and you, and you get discouraged and you look at them and you look at the enemy. What Joshua and Caleb saw was what God was going to give them, the blessings of the land. We can't, when we focus on what's going on in our lives, let us focus not on the circumstances that are troubling us, but on the God who can deliver us. And he already has delivered us. We hold on, that's walking with God by faith. Here's, here's Joshua's greatest testimony, it was in Numbers, it's not on your screen here. It's in Numbers 32, 11 to 12. You remember when the Israelites um, did not believe. 
And they wandered for 40 years. And that generation went by the wayside. And here's what God was saying. Because they have not followed me wholeheartedly, not one of those who were 20 years old and more when they came up out of Egypt will see the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not one except Caleb, son of Jedna, the Kinzite, and Joshua, son of Nun, for they followed the Lord wholeheartedly. <laughs> Trust the Lord with all your heart. How many want to follow the Lord wholeheartedly? That means taking off everything that, that takes that frustration and all of the life experiences and saying, I don't care what I go through. I am, my heart is going to be aligned with God and I'm going to serve him and I'm going to walk with him by faith. Amen. I am excited about a God that loves me, cares for me, understands me and follows me and never leaves me or forsakes me. Guess what? I don't see that every day. I don't see it in my flesh. I don't see it in my mind sometimes. But isn't it great that God is there anyway? Right? He's not going to leave us. When you walk out of this room, he's not going to leave us no matter what you're facing. He's just not going to leave us. So let's pick it up at the Jordan River because here God has brought them through the Red Sea. They, they, they've been in the wilderness for 40 years and now it's time to go in and take the lands. And in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9, it says this. And this is the Lord's charge to Joshua. Listen carefully. Oh, by the way, did you know that God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever? Didn't you hear that somewhere? So look, we look in the Hebrews and we see the faith of those people in Hebrews 11. But we look at the Old Testament because it still applies. The same God is there in the Old Testament as he is in the New Testament. He doesn't change. I got to tell you something, humans don't change either. We're still as stubborn as the Israelites, aren't we? We still go our own way, you know? So, but God still speaks to us. So this is a really encouraging word. Here's what God said to Moses. It says in verse one, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, the Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you that what I promised Moses, wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you, from the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the lands of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you will live, as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. They didn't know what was expected here. What are you talking about going across the Jordan River? I mean, there's no Lowe's or Home Depot to build a bridge. They couldn't find it. They checked their GPS, but it ain't there. So verse 6, God says, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. How, look, notice how many times he says be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Why does God want him to do that? Why did he want them to do that? Why does he want us to do that? To meditate on it day and night. To make sure it's in your heart so that you know what to do every single day of your life. You can walk with God. You can overcome any circumstance because you've walked with God. It's planted in you, and Joshua had it planted in him. That's why God brought him to this river, and he was about to do a miracle here. But, he, but that's for us too, to study it, to meditate on it. You need it. It's your food for the future so that you don't walk but to the right and to the left. And then no matter who tells you not to do what you need to do with the Lord, you're going straight ahead and you're following the Lord and you're not listening to other voices and you are moving forward in faith. 
because you've built that faith. You can't take it out of a vacuum. Hey, I gotta tell you, if you're here and you're new in the Lord, or you don't even know the Lord, guess what? He can start you right where you are. Don't worry about it. You know, we're talking about Joshua who since youth was used of God, but I'm telling you, you can be used of God where you are right now. All you have to do is now make a commitment to meditate on his word, to study it, to plant it in your heart so that you know every day what you need to do. Amen? Amen. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord is, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's the promise he gave to Joshua. So here's Joshua's instructions. They included God giving them the land, God being with him, God did not. He said, I will not abandon you and I will not fail you and be strong and courageous. Why am I strong and courageous? Because I have a God that that fills everything I need. He is my strength. He is my rock. He is an ever-present help in time of trouble. No matter what we go through. So what is takeaway number one? Takeaway number one is this. God always has a plan for us. And it is to bring us to him and his purpose for us. Folks, I don't care who you are. I don't care who you think you are. I don't care who the devil's telling you you are. You are created in the image and likeness of God. And God wants to save you and bring us through. And he loves us with an everlasting love. And he died on the cross so that we could have everlasting life. He is the almighty God. He called us to him. And we have to walk in faith. We're walking in faith, believing that. Walking with God by faith means believing what God has given you, what the blessings that he has given you. And the number one blessing is eternal life. We don't have to focus so much on this world because we know we have a home where we're gonna be when we get out of this earth. And we get out of this earthly bodies. God's given it to us. Yes, we have a worldly river. Right now it's called our lives. But can you imagine to be present with, with absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And as soon as we die, we are going to the Lord because precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints because he wants us to be with him for the rest of eternity. And we prepare ourselves now so that we can bring as many people as we can. See, walking by faith means that we are gonna be, our light's gonna shine. And we're going to witness to people. And we're going to disciple people. And we're going to bring them into that same knowledge that I know. Because our job is to bring as many people into the kingdom as we can. That's how God loves every single person. Amen? Amen. It is believing that he will always be with you. It is believing that he will not fail or abandon you. And it is being strong and courageous. He gives us that command. Be strong and courageous. Do not Focus on the enemy. All right, so here we are. We're at the Red Sea. I mean the Red Sea, sure. The Jordan River. Getting mixed up with a few minutes from now. So let's go to Joshua chapter 3. We're at the, we're at the Jordan River. God has not given them instructions as to how he is going to do this. But isn't that like God? He will tell us to do something and he'll say, just do it. Let me take care of the difficulties. Just write that check. I'll take care of your finances. Give to him. Forgive each other. You may not know how to do it, but he can show you. And the benefit comes later when we obey the Lord. In Joshua 3, it says, Early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left Acacia Grove and arrived at the banks of the Jordan River where they camped before crossing. Three days later, the Israelite officers went through the camp, giving these instructions to the people. When you see the Levitical priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, which represented the presence of God in that time, move out from your positions and follow them. Since you have, been tra- you have never traveled this way before, they will guide you. You see, that's the neat thing about this. The Israelites did not know where they were gonna go, but God did. And Joshua was hearing that. 
Stay about a half mile behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the ark. Make sure you don't come any closer. I read one commentary on this particular verse. It's really interesting. It said that the reason why there was about a thousand yard or, or two thousand yard, whatever it was, a half mile distance, is so everybody could see it. If they were too close, they weren't able to see it. Isn't that like God? He said, He says, I want you guys to just hold back. I'm going to go forward, and you're just going to follow me. You know what walking in faith means, right? That is so cool. Then Joshua told the people, purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. In the morning, Joshua said to the priests, lift up the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people across the river. And so they started out and went ahead of the people. Then Joshua, the Lord told Joshua, so now the Lord comes back in here. Today, I will, bring you, I will begin to make you a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites. They will know that I am with you just as I was with Moses. Give this command to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan, take a few steps into the river and stop there. It gives you goosebumps, doesn't it? So Joshua told the Israelites, come and listen to what the Lord God here says. Today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgasites, Amorites, Jebusites, the Doverites, the Smyrnaites, any financialites, relationshipites. He will drive them out ahead of you. Look, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. Now choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. The priest will carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. Kind of reminds him again, the Lord of all the earth. As soon as their feet touch the water, the flow of water will be cut off upstream and the river will stand up like a wall. Here's the miracle. So the people left the camp to cross the Jordan and the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. It was the harvest season and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. Isn't that like God? He says, you know, if you have an obstacle, I'm gonna wait till that obstacle gets even, even greater because I want you to know that I have the power to take care of anything in your life. I don't care how big you think it is. I'm gonna overflow the banks and I'm gonna make the obstacle seem really, 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 really bad to you. But I am the Lord God and I'm gonna step in and I'm gonna get in the middle of that and I'm gonna deliver you. That is so cool. God didn't, <laughs> the springtime, by the way, is, is like a harvest, and it's also where the snows of Mount Hermon melt, and so it, it ends up being a flood stage. It's like God didn't say, I'm going to do it in the fall where it's really simple, you know, the river's just about this. But you have to understand the miracle that we're talking about here. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above that point began backing up a great distance away at a town called Adam which is near Zethron. And the water below that point flowed on to the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Then all the people crossed over near the town of Jericho. Wow. I gotta give you a little, bit of, a little bit of a context here because this is so cool, okay? I want you to understand what the Jordan River is. We have one map up here. And if you're, if you're I've, got, I've got the pointer here on your right-hand side. But the Jordan River is between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. So this is the Jordan River right here. Now they're over here. Jericho's over here, okay? Now, geographically, it's 65 miles between the Sea of Galilee and the um, Dead Sea, okay? What is interesting is that the river itself travels 130 miles. Now you got to get that. There's only 65 miles between the two, two seas, but the reason why there's 130 miles is because it's a winding river. And it's winding to almost double the size. So I want you to get a picture of what God is doing here, okay? Second slide is a little bit closer. All right, here's the crossing site. Now here's the Dead Sea, and here's the town of Adam, which basically, on a geographical level, from Jericho to Adam is about 30 miles. I just want you to get that, okay? So that means that probably about 30 miles here to this and another maybe 10 miles here, that God did is he backed up the river for about 40 
miles. So can you imagine, I don't know what 30, 40 miles, from here to Seaford, let's say, okay? We are in a river, and from here to Seaford, God, God dries it up so that two plus million people and all their possessions could cross on dry ground, in flood stage. Are you getting it? That is important. But listen to me carefully. A river is a little bit different than a sea. So I think this miracle was so pow- much more, not much more powerful because God can do anything, right? But it was a little bit more powerful in that this was river water flowing from the Sea of Galilee. The Jabbok River is somewhere north of Adam here. So when he stopped up that river, he had to stop every tributary that came into that river. He had to stop the Galilee from flowing into it. This was a profound miracle before God. Amen? Amen. Aren't you excited? (laughs) Flood stage. He stopped everything. God can do anything. Let's take it up at verse 17. Meanwhile, the priests who were carrying the ark of the Lord's covenant stood on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by. They waited until they waited there until the whole nation of Israel had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. I'm like, "Wow, do you know what God did? He not only parted the river, but he went in the middle of it. And he just said, "You go ahead, I'll take care of anything that's around. Go." And he watched and he waited, and the presence of the Lord was there. And I got to tell you the presence of the Lord is with you too. And he is in the middle of your circumstance. And he will never leave you again, right? Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Let's take, a, let's take it up in uh, Joshua chapter four because there's a very important story here that I want to emphasize. And that is the fact that, you know, they were picking up 12 stones. It says in Joshua four, verse one, when all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Now choose 12 men, one from each tribe. Tell them, take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out and pile them up at the place where you will camp tonight. So Joshua called together. (laughs) I'm gonna tell you something. Who said this? Who said, who told him to do this? God, the Lord. I want you to, I want you to emphasize that for a minute, okay? Keep that in your mind. Joshua 4, uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 4. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. He told them, go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord your God. Each of you must pick up one stone and carry it on your shoulder. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to go pick up a stone. Oh, here it is. Yeah, it, it'd be big enough to carry it on your shoulder, okay? That's a pretty big stone. 12 stones in all, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. We will use these stones to build a memorial. Yeah. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? Then you will tell them, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. So the men did as Joshua had commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan River, one for each tribe, just as the Lord had told Joshua. They carried him to the place where they camped for the night and constructed the memorial there. Very important takeaway here. And it's simply this. God always wants us to remember. He always wants us to hold on in faith. We hold on to what God has done. We hold on to the testimony of what God has done in your life. We listen to other people's testimony and we begin to believe that God is there because I remember him, he is always going to be with me. So why is it that God always wants us to remember? Perhaps it is because it reminds us of God's faithfulness. Secondly, and most importantly, God knows that we have a tendency to forget and to go our own way. (laughs) God is always saying, I want you to study the scriptures day and night. Meditate on them. I want you to get them in your heart so you remember what I want you to do. You remember what I did for you. Uh, it's It's a remembrance that God wants us to do because we go our own way. Third, it is a way to pass God's goodness to the future generations. We can pass down those stories. 
I think the saddest thing in our world is when we, trip, when we forget God. And we don't remember what he did. And you know what the enemy is doing in our world today, right? He's trying to get us away from remembering what God has done. But listen, remembering also increases our faith. Takeaway number three. And I love this point. I was just thinking about this story and this just came to me. Walking with God by faith means he is always walking with us. You know, sometimes we struggle, right? Because we're told to walk by faith, but then sometimes we don't see him. But he's there. Kurt Thompson said this in his book, The Soul of Shame. He says, he, he was quoting Hebrews when, he, when it said that we are to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And he says, you're not gonna understand that verse until you understand that you fixing your eyes on him, you're seeing God fixing his eyes on you. That is powerful to me. That is also scary, by the way. And sometimes I think that's why I, I, I know I, it's been my experience at times because of shame and guilt and all of this other stuff and just the, the self-worth issues and all of that stuff that sometimes you look at God and you kind of see him looking back at you and you want to shrink. But I want you to see God's eyes as eyes of love. That he'll meet you right where you are. So walking by faith means I can walk right now. I can pick up a walk. If I haven't walked at, to this point, maybe I've never walked with God. Now I can pick it up. But when I walk with God, he's walking with me. We have an advocate, right? Look back at the river crossing. The people saw the ark and how it stopped the river, right? The people passed the ark as they crossed over because the ark was in the middle of the river. And then the people watched the ark complete the crossing after they were on the other side. Joshua 4.11 says this, and when everyone was safely on the other side, the priests crossed over with the ark of the Lord as the people watched. Joshua 4.18, as soon as the priests carrying the ark of the Lord's covenant came up out of the riverbed and their feet were on high ground, the water of the Jordan returned and overflowed its banks as before. So do you realize the miracle that we have here? That God began it, he stood in the middle of it, and then he didn't let the people drown. He waited until they were all safely on the other side, and then he released the waters. Think of what that means for us, walking with God by faith. God was with them in the beginning of the river crossing. He was in the middle of the river as they crossed, and God was the last one out of the river when everyone was safe. Isn't that like Jesus? He is God incarnate. He is the Holy Spirit in us. No matter what we go through, no matter what we face, no matter what adversity comes to us, Jesus is always with us at the beginning of any circumstance. He is always in the middle of any circumstance and he brings us to safety and he walks us to completion in any circumstance. That's what it means because he never leaves us or forsakes us. Amen? Jesus is the Ark of the Covenant that's within us. That's what happened. He has not left us because he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Final takeaway. God walks, watches us through every phase of our lives, especially when things seem impossible. He walks through every phase of our lives. That's him not leaving us. In Joshua chapter four, it says, then Joshua said to the Israelites, in the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, this is what the Israelites, this is when the, where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the river right before your eyes, and he kept it dry until you were all across, just as he did at the Red Sea, when he dried it up until they were all crossed over. He did this so all the nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful. And so you might fear the Lord of your God forever. And that word fear is not to be afraid. It is in reverence. I mean, if any of you have ever seen, how many of you have ever seen a river do that? Anybody? We're in real time here? Yeah, it doesn't take so. But how many of you know that God can part any river in your life? Any river that's at flood stage in your life? 
anything that is going on in your life right now, he can take care of because the Lord is powerful. So we fear him. We are reverent of him. We're in awe of him. We worship him. That's, it's walking by faith. Amen? So I'm, I'm, I'm studying this particular scripture and, and I had a goosebump moment. You know what a goosebump moment is? <laughs> it's, when you, it's when you realize something and you have goosebumps. It's like, wow, that is so powerful. So I'm gonna tell you something that's real powerful. Are you ready? Are you sitting down? Okay. Listen to me carefully. Let me tell you what God is. Let me tell you who God is, okay? You ready? All right, let's everybody check their sleeves. There's a goosebump. No, I'm just kidding. I told this to Dorothy. She goes, huh? Until I, until, I, until I put some context to it, okay? But I'm going to put some context to this. Listen to me carefully. God parted the Red Sea to free them from their past. But he stopped the Jordan River to bring them to their future. I got goosebumps now. In the middle, he carried them through. Let's look at Jesus for a minute. At the beginning of his ministry in Nazareth, in a synagogue, he stood up to read the scriptures, and here is what he read. It says in Luke 4, he unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring, to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim, the, the, proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, and the oppressed will be set free, and that that time of the Lord's favor has come. He preached Isaiah 61. And then it says in verse 20, he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently. <laughs> That's, you got to picture that one. Jesus gets up, and he, it, he cites Isaiah 61, which is the freedom from the past, right? And then he says these words. Then he began to speak to them. The scripture you've just heard has been fulfilled this very day. See, at the beginning of the ministry, of his ministry, he's already proclaimed that he will set us free from our past. But look at the end of his ministry. He said on the cross, in the greatest agony on the cross, he says, it is finished. And then in Mark 15, 38, it said, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, ushering us into the presence of God with no need of sacrifice. Yes. Freely, at the beginning of his ministry, he set us free. At the end, of his ministry, he gave us life forever and relationship with God. Think about it. Jesus frees us from our past and he brings us to our future and he carries us through everything in between. Are you excited about that? I don't, I don't wanna generate any emotion, but I just think that's pretty powerful. And I want you to take that with you because that, that to me is everything, that Jesus takes care of all of our lives. It doesn't matter what you've been through, it doesn't matter where you are today, and it doesn't matter what you're gonna experience tomorrow, Jesus is gonna walk with you because God walked with the Israelites. We have the Ark of the Covenant within us and it is time to walk by, with God by faith and believing that. He is always in us and walks with us and brings us into this plan for us every day of our lives by faith through his spirit. So I want to cap all of this and conclude it here as the band comes out with this. God is with us and he walks with us in any circumstance. You need spiritual help. He is there. You need emotional or mental help. He is there. You need physical healing. He is there. You have struggle in relationships, he is there. In your marriages, he is there. In our families, with our kids, with our families of extended families, he is there. In our finances, he is there. In our jobs, he is there. In our friendship circle, he is there. In any situation we face, God is there. Jesus is there. I love that. By faith, we hold on to his plan and purpose. By faith, we always remember what he did for us. By faith, we focus on God's will and ways for us. 
And by faith, we realize the fact that he always walks with us as we walk with him. But there is a little caveat here. And it has to do with our humanness. We will not always be our way. Oh, no. I want to do it my way, Lord. It will not always be our way or our thoughts or our understanding, but it would always be for our good. We're not going to understand what God does. Nobody in the Israelite clan understood what he was about to do to the river. Nobody could imagine it's never been done before. But isn't we serving a God that does things that have never done before? That's the God we serve. That's the God you serve. Walk with Jesus by faith. I want us to stand. One of the things that, and I want you to, to get your communion emblems ready. If you're online, if you have something that you can commemorate here in some respects here. So, I want us to honor God. Amen? His presence is here. It has humbled me to minister on his behalf. And I so appreciate what he's done for me. Now, all of the time, I may not realize it. I may not feel it. I may not see it. But I know he's there. And because I planted the word of God in my heart, it helps me through those difficult times. So we're all going to have difficult times, right? Many are the tribulations of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from some of them. You got it. Many are the tribulations of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. Now, it may not be in our, our way, and it may not be in our timing, because a lot of times people will say, uh, well, I prayed, and he hasn't come through. And I always end the sentence with, yet. He hasn't come through yet. But you have to hold on. You have to hold on, no matter what the circumstance, but you hold on by remembering him. Jesus was in the Last Supper, and he said, this is like the 12 stones, right? Jesus said to his disciples, this is my body. He broke the bread and said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. So just like the Israelites were told to commemorate the, the river crossing, Jesus is always telling us, remember what I did for you. I broke my body for you. And then he had them drink the cup, which represented his blood, which gave us a future, <laughs> eternal life. Folks, I got to tell you, just before we do this, if you don't know Jesus, if you come in and you're new, or you've been here for a while, but you haven't accepted Christ. It's just a simple thing. God made it so simple a kindergartner could do it. All it is saying, remember the thief on the cross? All he said is, remember me. It wasn't what he said. It was within his heart. Remember Romans 10, 9, and 10, if you believe that Jesus you know, died, if you believe that he lived and he died for you in your heart and confess it with your mouth, you shall be saved. That's all. So taking communion is a serious thing. We are acknowledging Jesus and what he did for us. And hopefully what we do is we go out of here and say, Lord, I want to change. I want, I want to walk with you now. I want to walk by faith. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to do it. And so maybe we need help from other people to do it too. That's why we need a church. That's why we need each other. So we're going to commemorate Jesus, okay? So let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. I am so grateful and humbled to be in your presence because of what Jesus did on the cross. And we commemorate that now. We will take this bread and we will do it very seriously, remembering what you did with your body. It was broken for us. You lived a perfect life so that we didn't have to. And now for the blood, Lord, we just pray this symbol of the blood that you shed in this grape juice. It, re it, it resembles what you did on the cross in shedding your blood for the remission of sin. So cleanse us, we pray. Forgive us of our sin before we take this. Because we know that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You do it all. You do it all. 
You don't just forgive us one sin, you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's like you. When we come to you, you don't do just what we ask, you do everything for us. But we have to follow you and obey you. Thank you for these emblems. May we do it in remembrance of what you did for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take the bread together, remembering you. Hallelujah. Let's take the cup in remembrance of him shedding his blood. 